that I revoked that legal notice and restored the function of conducting elections to its rightful place. Although the president continued to appoint the commissioners. Just before I revoked the legal notice, I was surprised when I was invaded in my office by all the political opposition political parties and the leaders at around 6 30, 7 p.m. as I was working. And I believe they came because of the Attorney General, but more so because I was the person in charge of elections. They, were, they came with their key supporters. I don't know if I can. Some of the, no, some, you are, I think most of you are young. No, to us, uh, among the key supporters. Uh, at that time, I can't think. Uh, I think, can you also be shocked? I think, the only one who may go to Fahir. I don't so. think I was. <laughs> this is a timely and godly hour. Some of the world will feel it now, treated in a. More university, I think, <laughs> at that time, or maybe in some private school in Mombasa. <laughs> this was around. This was now in May of 1992. Oh, okay. All the opposition political parties plus the accused supporters came to my office and made it clear to me that I convey to the president that he disbands the electoral commission immediately and new members appointed. With their involvement, new members appointed with their involvement. In other words, they wanted to propose members and the president appoints. Of course, the clerical cause at that time was no new electoral commission, no elections. To cut the long story short, and that may would one day appear in my memoirs in, in an extensive. We discussed up to about 10 p.m. and they agreed in my proposal, which was in accordance with the constitution as it was then. The proposal was that although the president had no constitutional powers to disband the commission once appointed, however, the constitution at that time provided only a minimum of members of the Electoral Commission. So consequently, he could appoint additional, additional members. So I, I say the way I can help them is through that way or advise the government. So we agreed that they should go and nominate to give me a list of persons from whom the president can, in his absolute discretion, appoint. I informed them that such persons should not be officials of the political party or any party or be active members of their party or any party or be persons known to belong to their party or any party. Furthermore, such persons should be persons of integrity, well respected in society, persons who had retired honorably from public or private